right? So gather yourself as much as possible. And uh, we're going to go into some, some teaching because the Spirit's been speaking. And kiddos, you can be released. Nick, why do we make fun of Nick so much? Well, yeah, because we want to be like Nick, that's why. Ooh. It's a new generation. Instead of, it's be like Nick. Whoo. Wow. All right, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Don't go too far. Don't go too far. Man, first of all, I am thankful for a metal pulpit that can hold me up because I feel toasted. You guys know when the glory comes, nothing else really matters. I mean, I don't care what you got in your crock pot. I don't care what plans you got. The glory's everything. This is what we contend for. This is what we're praying for. This is why you go through the fire. Because when you go through the fire, then you're able to receive what heaven has, right? Okay, so I want to talk to you today about hindrances to hearing, your, hearing the Father's voice. Okay, hindrances to hearing the Father's voice. I'll call this the precursor to Kathy's class. She didn't know that, but that's maybe what it is. So listen, I'm going to tell you where this is coming from. I'm going to give you the heartbeat, and then I need you guys to really listen because I know today is supposed to be very prophetic. It's a now word for you, okay? Everybody understand me? It's a now word, all right? Not a yesterday word. I, I didn't duplicate this. I literally like wrote a whole study guide just from taking notes the past couple of weeks. And so I'm going to condense this into what I feel like the Holy Spirit's saying to you right now, all right? So to give you guys a little bit of a context to this, um, I had a small vision this morning before we got here. And that was a lot of times, well, this is what I saw. I saw believers in a field with their machete and they were hacking, they're hacking. And it was specifically vines, right? They were hacking these vines, they were hacking these vines. Now, what was happening was, though, is they would hack the vines, and after they hacked the vines, they would be, keep going around, but they would come back around, and those vines regrew. And I saw people in years and years and years of cycles of hacking and plowing and hacking and plowing, feeling like they were never getting anywhere because as soon as they would cut the vines, the vines would regrow. Well, what I saw the Holy Spirit doing this morning was... Uh, Matthew 3.10, Behold, I lay the axe at the root. Amen. The axe at the root. And I have great news for you. Least your theology might be a little confused. The axe is not to cut you off. The axe is not judgment against you. The axe is freedom for you. The things that have held you back, the things that have disrupted you, the things that have kept you back, what happened earlier, that's freedom. I need freedom. If you don't think you need freedom, you really need freedom. <laughs> so the axe is here. There's a fiery axe, and it wants to distinguish between you, God's beautiful son and daughter, and the things that have been growing and trying to take and capture you. Okay, so here we go. So let's talk about God's voice. Some of these things you know, but uh, let me frame this for you, okay? Because the truth is, is I want to turn this into a little mini book too. So God's voice, we know it's language, right? We know that when he speaks, it's words, it's communication. We understand that. But God's voice is so much more. And oh, and I got a little bit of a, I feel like I'm in a, a ringing box, if you can help me. But language is so much more than communication. Language is tone, right? Tone. So you got to know that some of these things, heaven, when it comes to God's voice, a lot of times we're looking for the words, but we miss the whole package. So many people want to hear a thus saith the Lord, but they miss all that is 
when, when heaven speaks to you and the Father speaks to you, there's so much more than words, right? And so when you unpack it, you begin to realize there's tone. It's happy. It's sad. It's angry. Maybe God is jealous for you. It's passionate. It's the fire of his love. His, his voice also has motive. It has intent. It has purpose. Heaven's voice is not just a radio frequency flying through the air, uh, airwaves. And if you get your antenna just right with a bunch of foil on it, like back in the day. <laughs> How many of you used to do some foil on the antennas? You know what I'm talking about? Am I preaching to somebody here? Yes, I am. Put some foil on antennas. <sighs> yeah, good word. <laughs> But see, that's what we kind of do as Christians. We're like, you know, trying to upgrade our antennas. We're putting foil on it. You know, we're trying to upgrade to fiber. We're trying to do all these things because we want to hear God's voice because we feel like God, God's voice is this frequency that we have to like somehow magically connect with. But the truth is, is that heaven is always, always, always. Can I say the word always? Always being delivered spiritually then sometimes we make wrong moves. Well, I thought God was telling me to quit my job. Well, I thought God was saying the rapture was coming tomorrow and to sell everything. Well, no. If God didn't tell Jesus, why the heck would he tell you? I think he would tell his son first. But he's not going to. We don't know. We're supposed to live and occupy and do everything we can while we're here, right? Okay, that was a free point. Free points. Here they come, throwing them out. Free points. Okay, so the snake was the shrewdest of all. Uh, The Webster's 1828 says that shrewd is having the qualities of a troublesome and mischievousness. Mischievousness. So that means everything he does has an angle. Everything he does has an intent. Everything has a purpose, and that purpose is no bueno. It is not good. It is to destroy you. It's to steal. It's to kill. It's to destroy you. Okay? See, what I want to do is I want to drive a wedge right in the between of this middle thing. Because if you want to walk into your destiny, if you want to walk in the call of God, which all of you have a calling, all of you have so much to have, then you have to start to begin to call things as they are. God, not God. Because if you don't start there, how are you going to get anywhere? Some people live their whole lives wandering and waiting when they had everything inside of them. All the potential was inside of them. They were like, you know, I, I could tell you many times, all of us have done, done this, excuse me, where you have someone that's uh, in their later years and they're like, I always wish I could paint. I feel like that was something that was in their spirit, but somehow the enemy convinced them to never do it. I always wished I could play an instrument, Christine. It's our anniversary. She kept me this long, so might as well throw it out there, though. But listen, you guys have dreams and hopes inside of you that came from heaven, and I'm tired of the enemy talking you out of it. I'm so tired of it. Because it happened to me for a lot of years. And I'm at the point now where I'm going to let out what God has put inside of me. And if you don't like it, you don't understand it, I'm okay with it. I'm that crazy now. But I believe that's where we were supposed to be. Because if heaven's put it inside of you, how dare anybody try and shut it up? Okay? Now listen, you need to have some tact with it though. Don't be going crazy and doing things that the Spirit's not saying. Because a lot of times, you'll start to release it, and you'll start adding to it. Don't be adding to what the Spirit's saying. Don't be taking away, but don't be adding, okay? I'll give my guacamole. (laughs) Okay. I was talking to some friends, and we were talking about communication and hearing God's voice. And I said, listen, have you ever gone to the store and you pick out an avocado, Right? I love avocados. I don't know. I used to not be an avocado guy. I'm an avocado guy. I don't know why. I just wanted to share that with you guys. It's part of my heart. (laughs) You're welcome. So when you pick out an avocado, they're normally not ripe, right? So you get it home, you put it on the table, and what you do, you check it. 
and then it's not very soft, I'm going to wait. So with an avocado, there's this point where it's perfectly ripe, and that's when you want to eat it. When it comes to the gifts, when it comes to the word of the Lord, you have to make sure that thing is now. Because if you cut it open too early, it's going to be bitter. If you wait too late, it's going to be nasty. So you can have a right word and a wrong time and mess something up. Okay, that was free. I got a lot of free stuff today, okay? All right, so let's get back to the snake. So the snake said, did God really say you must not eat from the fruit of any of the trees? Now think about this. He's trying to drive a wedge in her thinking. All right? I'm, I want to talk about this because I want you to see yourself. He's trying to drive a wedge in the thinking. Did God really say all the trees? And it's interesting how, I mean, if, if you have a snake coming to you and asking you questions, it's not because it really needed that information. It's not coming because it really needs clarification. It's not coming because it thinks you have a solution and you can help it. It's coming to take you off track and to destroy you. And so if a snake is asking you, you guys get it, I'll leave that there. So listen, so the snake says, any of the trees in the garden? And it's almost like he tees her up to answer where she says, no, not any of the trees, it's just this tree. So snake's like, oh, okay, thanks for clarifying that, right? So then what does he say after that? It says, surely you won't die, right? You won't die. God knows that your eyes will be opened and you'll know good and evil. Did the snake tell the truth? Oh, oh, oh. Your eyes will be opened. And as soon as you eat it, yes, and you will be like God, yes, knowing both good and evil, yes. So here's the enemy using God's word to throw him off track. Reminds me of what happened to Jesus. Reminds me of what's been happening to you. The enemy will use scriptures to get you to stay in a small place. He will tee up God's word to you. He will position it and frame it in a way that you get manipulated and tricked. That's why we are so careful. We try and be so careful. Listen, we're not perfect, all right? Please, no, we're not perfect. People say that, but like, I really mean that. I know I'm not perfect. Christine will tell you, I'm not perfect. Ask my daughters. But what happens is, is we get enough of scripture, but when we don't have God's heart, God's motive, God's tone, God's voice, framing scripture correctly, then scripture begins to turn into a hammer that will beat you. That's why we need the Spirit of God to divide the word of truth inside of us. There's a reason why you're like, oh, it doesn't feel right. Probably because it's not right. <laughs> See, you have allowed yourself to feel so discredited that now you don't feel like you can actually make decisions. You live in this neutral place waiting for the big moments that God speaks I'm going to go somewhere. Don't get angry. Trying to get a word from somebody because you need somebody to lead you. When you were never meant to be led by people, you were meant to be led by the Spirit of God inside of you. Okay? You want to know why me and Ryan don't just go around flinging words out? I could. Trust me, I could. But I would rather A, know it's the right time, and B, I want a prophetic word I have to confirm something for you. I want to confirm it for you. I want you to say, yes, this is what God's been saying to you. Because what happens is, is if I present something that you have never even processed or got from the Lord yourself, now it looks like, A, I'm more spiritual, or it looks like now you have to depend on me for everything else that surrounds that. Or then now you don't know all the framework of that word. I can tell you God's moving you into a new season. But if you haven't been feeling that in your spirit, now you're going to, and I'm not confirming that for you. Now you're going to take that word and you'll be like, okay, do I quit my job? 
Um, is, is this going to happen? Where do I, am I moving? You know, you start going down these roads and it feels muddy and it feels messy because the, you, you don't even know what God's heart is for you about the new season. Okay? If anybody gives anybody or receives any prophetic word in this church, you should be able to take that and be able to get God's heart surrounding that word. Oh, this is what my father's doing in me. This is what my dad is saying to me. This is what my father's unlocking in me. This is what my father's freeing me from. If a prophetic word doesn't do all those things, then it's, it was like that avocado. It's either not ripe or you haven't been doing your work in prayer, getting things from heaven first. Okay? It, is that, I don't know if that helps. I hope that helps a little bit. Okay, so this is what the snake does. So the snake uses some truth. You'll be like God. You'll both know good and evil. But what he left out was what that really meant. He gave you enough truth. He gave Eve enough truth to lead her to convince her. Isn't it interesting how all that happens with the demonic is about him trying to convince her? Your thoughts, your mind. Because as you think, you're going to go that way. If you start believing in your purpose and your destiny and what the Spirit is saying, all of a sudden the motors are kicking on and you're going to start heading in the direction of what the Spirit is saying. On the flip side, if you start agreeing with snakes, and let me tell you, they're very sneaky. Well, you know, that, that was really good for these people, but I kind of think you got disqualified from when you did this and when you did this and when you did this and when you did this. And the Bible does say his mercies are new every morning, but I don't know that that really applies to you in this situation. Those, I know you've all had those thoughts because I've had those thoughts. <laughs> That's why the Bible talks so much about transformation and renewing your mind because it all started with the thoughts and the communication in the garden. That is why you are going through what you're going through. Nothing has changed. The snake has not changed. His tactics have not changed. You guys getting this? Okay. Looking at me scary. All right. Okay. So the snake, this is what the snake doing. The snake tells the truth, and he was right about most of these things, but he had just enough to insert his evil agenda. He had enough meat on the bone to insert his evil agenda. The snake gave enough truth, but withheld the consequences and the destruction that he was teeing her and us up for. Right. Satan plays mind games with you daily. Well, I don't know, you know, if there's, are there really like that many demons? Are there really this much going on? Let me tell you, as a chaplain who's been on the streets, that has been to suicides, that's been to domestic calls, that's been to murders, walking through crime scenes of girls, little teenage girls that should have never died. There is a hell and there's demons and they are coming to destroy people's lives. But thank God for Jesus Christ, which changes everything, changes everything for you and for me and for us and our kids and our grandkids. It changes everything. And that is why we go after God. That's why we pursue heaven. That's why we constantly renew our minds and we root out things that don't belong there. Because you have a call and you have a destiny on your life. And we don't want a little bit of garden, a bad theology in the garden to destroy the destiny that's supposed to be in you. Amen. Right? Okay. That's enough about snakes. I hate snakes. I hate snakes. Sorry, Kelsey. I hate snakes. So here we go. I want to talk about the Father's voice a little bit. John 10, 27. John 10, 27. 
and you know this, but we're going to break this down. So I love breaking scripture down because really, you know, where I'm going with this about God's voice is, is you have to have more than the words, right? When I'm spending time with my wife and I tell her I love her, those words are backed up by emotion. They're backed up by, by trials, by victories, through ups, through downs. Everything I'm saying is coming through the words, I love you. And so when God says, I love you, you have to know that he's thinking of how his son sacrificed everything, how the blood covers you, how he's wanted to restore relationship, how he longs for you, how he wants you, how he wants to spend time with you. When he says he loves you, it's not words, it's all that flooding in. But if all you see is black and white letters, then you miss it. You miss it. And if you miss it, then you leave yourself open for the enemy to come and start to confuse. You leave an opening for him to come and begin to manipulate you and pull you off in little places here and there. Okay? So John 20, 20, uh, 10, 27. The sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. I know them. I know them. And they follow me. Let's stop right there. So I'm going to give you a couple keys to knowing your father's voice. First of all, it says his sheep. When you look that up in the Greek, you find that it says someone that is easily led. So to hear God's voice, I would like to point out a couple things for you. First of all, are you willing to be led? If you want to be one that hears God's voice, walks in the miraculous, sees signs, wonders, and miracles, you have to first be willing to be led. The other thing is, is you have to be willing to no longer be driven. This world wants to drive you, make more money, buy more things, do this. Listen, I'm going to just tell you a little secret. You probably already know the secret, but I'm going to share it anyway. There's a reason why things continually fall apart and, and are broken. There's a reason why your cell phone battery lasts only a year now. There's a reason why your, uh, your pipes, your, your HVAC, there's a reason why things deteriorate much quickly, quickly, much more quickly now. It's because companies have found out that it's easier to create reoccurring business if there's faulty pieces and things. Trust me, I've been on the other side. I've seen it. <laughs> so my point is this. The world wants to drive you to do more, buy more, be more. And it takes you to a point where you collapse and fall apart. You should look at the statistics of heart attacks, panic attacks, eating disorders, suicides. Why is all that rising? Because the machine keeps driving. So you have to come out of this fallen, broken world. So do you, are you driven? Because if you are, it's time to get off that treadmill. The next thing is, is if you're being led, are you, are you being in a place, are you in a place where you can develop your spirit and you can begin to understand the difference between your soul and your spirit? Let me talk some more about this in a minute. But you have to learn to begin to develop yourself where you understand the difference between spirit and soul. The other thing is, is are you listening? We have a lot of people talking. We don't have a lot of people listening. And I think this is where most people can stumble and trip is because we've, we've lost the art of listening. So if I'm counseling you, if Christine's counseling you, Ryan or any of us, what we're doing is we're listening. Why? Because when we're listening, we can hear past the words and we can go into where these words are coming from. We can go into what the enemies tried to do. We can go into what God is saying about you, over you, through you. Because if all we focus is on the words, then we live in this endless loop of never getting anywhere. We have to go to the heart. We have to go to the spirit of things. So if we are going, so if, if John 10, 27 says, the sheep that are my own. So first of all, you're his, you're his, right? We're not debating that. But if we're his, then we have to be like sheep. We have to be led. We have to be listening. We have to be ones that are not driven. 
And we have to understand his voice versus others, okay? So the next word I want to point out in here is the sheep that are mine here, 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 okay? To hear, you have to be listening. I'm going to hit this point again because I think it's such a missed point. To hear, you have to be listening. If you want to hear your spouse, you have to be listening to your spouse. If you want to hear God's voice, you have to be listening to his heart. And on the flip side of it, if, all, if you keep listening to what the demonic is telling you, that will get inside of you and take you down roads that you were never meant to go down. All of us can attest that there's times where we're like, this was never supposed to happen. I was never supposed to be here. I was never supposed to make that decision. And I absolutely 100% agree with you. But what happened was, is there was something that caused you to take a few side steps. Because the spirit would have been saying to you, don't say that, don't do that, don't go there, don't this. But what happened was, is we started siding with the other side. Amen. You got me? Yeah. Okay. So to hear means we turn off our soul filters. I'm going to talk about this in a minute. Your soul filters, your mind, your will, your emotions. And let's throw your past and your body in there too. When those things talk louder than your spirit, you will not be able to see spiritual things happen in your life. Yeah. Trust me, I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching from a place of stuff that I've had to learn the hard way. <laughs> and I try to practice daily. Amen. Because if I don't, then I'm going to revert back to a fallen world system. Right? So, let me say that again. Turn off the soul filters. What your mind's trying to say to you, what your body's trying to say to you, now, I'm not saying you go into denial, okay? I've seen that. Well, I'm, I'm not sick. Well, no, your leg's hanging off, bro. Let's go to the hospital. <laughs> Praise God, it's healed. Well, yes, yes, but I want to keep you alive. <laughs> and let's go to the hospital, let's quote scriptures, and let's get help on both sides right now. <laughs> Sometimes you need help on both sides, trust me, okay? So don't live in denial. Don't live in denial. I've seen many people pass away because of denial. Be very straight with you. I hope you can handle this. People have died early because they've den tried to live in this fake denial thing that they labeled faith, and it was not faith. It was fear. You are afraid to face it. So we are the ones that are going to face it and conquer it. We don't run from it. We run to it, and we deal with it. Okay, that's what we do here at Antioch. Amen. Make a t-shirt. Do something with that. Come on. All right. To hear means you also remove the hindrances of baggage and bondage and sin and trauma. That's what we are doing daily. Removing the hindrances from the things that have happened to us in this world. To hear, you must be listening from your spirit and not the noise of your soul. Your soul. Got more in a minute. Okay, the next thing I want to say is, so the sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. I know them. He knows you. So you have somebody that's talking to you that knows you. Not a little bit about you. You know, you can, I can, we could, you, we could meet each other. We could talk and we could, you know, we could have some dialogue. We could share some stories or something. But when he talks, he's talking from a place of knowing you. Right. He's searched your thoughts. He's searched your heart. He knows your beginning and end. He wrote the books about you. So when he talks, everything he says is with the full knowledge of you. So when he says, I love you, he says, I love you knowing everything. When he says, I've forgiven you, it's because he knows everything you need to be forgiven of. When he says, I want you, it's because he wants everything that you are. So it's not a half-baked, I love you. It's not a half-baked, I want you. It's not a half-baked, I forgive you, like you've probably experienced in this world. It is coming from a place of fully knowing you, wanting you, accepting you, and loving you, and 
believing in you. Right? Okay, this is some good preaching. Come on. All right. So, to know him. But to know him, you must become familiar with him. To know him means personal experience. It means relationship. It doesn't mean knowledge. It means relationship. The snake presented knowledge, but Eve did not use her relationship to beat that. So our goal is to take our relationship to conquer when the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and to start with getting you off track in your thinking. Relationship. To know him means you have to practice and you have to uh, prove out your relationship with him. So I'm going to throw a scary word out. You ready? It's called obedience. Oof. Where's the children at? No, I'm talking to you adults. <laughs> obedience. Now, I used to think obedience was waiting for God to say, go march around this seven times and, and go put ashes and sackcloth on your head. And I want you to declare to the whole store of Walmart, thus saith the Lord, da 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 It's very, very rare. And might I say, we don't live in the Old Testament anymore. I don't know if you guys realize that. Don't throw stones. Think about it. Think about it. I saw somebody went to pick up a stone. We're under a new covenant. And there's times when the Spirit speaks, but God has not called all of us to become these Old Testament prophets that are calling fire and brimstone. We're supposed to be healing and restoring, not destroying. Healing and restoring, not destroying. Okay. I don't even know where I pulled that from, but another free. There's another free. Okay. So to know him, we must become childlike. And we must be willing to listen to his voice. Now, let me tell you why I am totally comfortable with the word obedience. Because when my father tells me something, it's based on what I just said earlier, that he fully knows me. Because he fully knows me, I can fully trust him when he's telling me something. But if you don't fully know him, then you're going to struggle with obeying. You're going to struggle with it because you're not going to understand his motives, his intent, and his desire for you. Well, is God just trying to, you know, cut the limb off behind me to make me learn faith? You know, we get these weird thoughts that that's, that's not his heart for you. But see, when it comes to knowing God's voice, you have to be a listener, you have to be a hearer, and then you have to know him. Because if you don't have those things, then you won't be able to listen and obey his voice. If you don't have the foundation right, don't be trying to put a roof on that thing yet. Because it's going to fall on your head. Trust me. You have to know him. Okay, the last word I want to bring out on here is the sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me and I know them and they follow me, okay? So tying into this obedience things. To follow him, you must choose to be a follower. Choose to be a follower. Quit looking for a gift of following or a gift of, be of obedience. There's no fruit of the spirit like that. It's you. But see, when your heart's been won over, you don't get hung up on that stuff anymore. When Christine, if Christine said, hey, I need this, I would just do it because I know that she's asking me and what she's asking me has purpose and value. I'm not just going to question, why do you really need that? What do you, you know, we don't do that because our time together has caused us that we listen to each other, that we know each other, we understand each other's intents and motives, which helps us to then follow each other's lead. And I'll throw something else scary to you, man. I feel like just keep throwing stuff out here to you guys. I have no problem yielding to my wife. Why? Because when the Spirit of God's speaking to her, he spoke to her. And I need to come in unity with it. Okay? All right? I have no problem because... The Holy Spirit, under, when, we, when we're under the blood of Jesus, when the new covenant, when you look at the way that God cursed men and God cursed women, that, 
that's been restored with Jesus Christ. So we're a team now, okay? Christine is a pastor in this church. Now, nobody said anything. I'm not attacking anybody. I'm just talking, okay? But I want you guys to understand how we think and how we feel because I believe it's very New Testament. <laughs> and you don't see it in a lot of churches, but it's New Testament. Look at, uh, look at Paul with Priscilla and Aquila. Study that out. That'll mess you up a little bit. I grew up, my, grew up uh, with a woman pastor. I was looking at some old pictures randomly, and it was Sister Evelyn, actually. But Sister Evelyn, that woman preached fire. Like, there's fire, and then there's fire. She had fire, okay? Her church was so hot, sometimes that church would get really small. You know why? Because people couldn't hand the fire. So it's not about the size of the church. It's about how hot the church is. <laughs> Women, you guys have a call and a prophetic gifting on your life. And if the word of the Lord is coming through you, then we need to be listening to it. Just throwing it out there. That's for somebody out there. I don't know. Okay, let's keep going. So hearing God's voice, you have to be sheep. You have to be led. You have to hear. You have to know the shepherd. And then you have to learn to follow. Everybody say follow. follow. Okay. So I want to talk a little more about hindrances. Hindrances. I want to talk about the middle. I want to root some of this stuff out in us, okay? So if we've determined what voice is, then we must ask what hinders us from knowing it intimately, okay? Not knowledge of it, but knowing his voice intimately. So much that if you were in a room, blindfolded, lights out, he could whisper and you would say, that's my father. And then if somebody else whispered, you'd say, that's not my father. And you would run because that's scary, right? <laughs> but that is the intimate place he wants to draw us into because that's where you hear the secrets of his heart. That's when he explains scripture to you. That's when he unpacks the beautiful things that he has for you, okay? All right, so you don't find his voice in your soul. Let's dig into this. You don't find his voice in the soul. And if you're looking to hear his voice from your emotions or from your mind or somewhere else, you won't find it. You will find a voice, but it won't be his. It'll be a snake. I guarantee it. <laughs> so you have to know that your soul is not where he's speaking. It's your spirit. It's your spirit. Your soul should respond to what your spirit says, okay? Your soul should respond to what your spirit's saying. But a lot of us, what's happening is, is our soul keeps responding to the things you've been through. Your soul responds from the trauma. Your soul responds to this pain and that pain and this and that happened and this went over here, this broke and this fell apart. That's why your soul talks really loud. It talks really loud because it's got all these things that have happened to you and it's speaking to you, okay? So let me give you a little counseling tip. If you keep having these reoccurring dreams, if you keep having these things come up inside of you, there's a source. Things don't just come magically from nothing, okay? So if you're like, like Kevin likes to say, it's like you keep passing the same 7-Eleven in an area. Well, there's a certain point where you'll be like, you know what? I think I'm just going in loops. I'm just cycling here. And when you are cycling, it's because there's something that has happened to you that has caused your soul to be trapped in this cycle. And so you got to get enough healing and deliverance and restoration, me too, that you come out of that and you start to be led by the shepherd again in that area. Okay? So there you go. Another free one. Merry Christmas. It's early. God bless you from Antioch. So to know his voice, you have to know him. If you don't know him, how are you going to hear him? How are you going to interpret him? You're not going to understand what he's saying. You have to know him. That's why Ryan writes all of his books about this. That's why we preach this. This is why we go so hardcore on this. Because we have found in our years of experience that most people don't get anywhere because they can't get this right. So we want to be the ones that are different. We're not, we're okay. 
with, with getting out the surgery tools. We're okay with talking about some of the harder things. And you know what the hard thing is? It's, it's your heart. <laughs> Trust me. Woo! Got a lot going on there. Just going to tell you. But I do too. But when we begin to apply the word of God correctly, we begin to know him and we know his voice and we understand the love of God, we can heal, we can navigate through anything and see all that heaven had for us begin to come out, right? Okay, John 6, 36. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. Boy, I love that translation. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, okay? So if you feel like you have an area inside of you that does not have life, if you feel like you can't hear God's voice, if you feel like you're struggling in different areas, it's because your flesh is no help to you. It's, it's, it's baggage, to be honest with you. It's baggage. Now, in the garden, it was not supposed to be that way. In the garden, everything was alive. Everything was in unity. Everything flowed perfectly. But because we live in this fallen realm, we have places in us that are not restored and whole yet, right? We all understand that. So it is the spirit who gives life. So if you have a place that doesn't have life, it's because you got to get the spirit into it. You just got to find out, how do I get the Holy Spirit into this place? And you knock and you knock and you press and you press and you pray in tongues, you pray in tongues, you read, you study, you do that until life enters that area. If you have an addiction, if you have a problem, if you have a cycle, if you have a broken place, if you have a bent place inside of you, all you have to do is get life into it. Well, Mike, it's not that simple. Well, what if it was? Maybe the reason why you can't deal with it is because you keep thinking it's not that simple. Reminds me of the gospel and why people struggle to accept Jesus Christ. Anyways, moving right along. Okay, so to know him, you must spend time in the word, time in worship, time with the spirit. Because the more you spend time with the soul, the less spirit you have. You've got to tip the scale. You've got to tip the scale. So when we say go after God, pursue God, do these things, it's not because we're trying to beat you with it. It's because if you don't tip the scales, then all you're going to get is the fruit of the soul. If you want fruit of the spirit, you have to sow spirit. Okay, that's, that's the secret right there. That's the answer to everything. Get the spirit in areas that the spirit's not inside of that place inside of you and tip the scales. That's why the more you watch junk, the more you consume junk, the more you are around junk, your spirits, here's your spirit, here's your, your soul's like, yeah. and then you feel like, where's God? He's so far away, I can't hear him. Well, it's because the filters of your soul are so clogged up and so full of stuff that you can't hear what the Spirit is saying through it. Okay? All right, so I'm going to skip this. I have props. Here we go. All right. Jamie, come help me. Isn't Jamie so cool? Yeah. I want to be like Jamie. Okay. All right, Sarah. Okay, so a couple of years ago, I did a whole message on this, but I just knew I had to share it with you because why not? It's what I felt like the Holy Spirit was saying. So we all have filters in our home, right? And if you don't change your filters, what happens? It gets clogged and clogged and nasty, nasty, nasty. Okay, I used to work on rentals. Uh, hey, my air conditioning's not working. Um, when's the last time you replaced your filter? Oh, I don't have a filter. <laughs> I, I, I know there's a couple of you in here. <laughs> Your filters are designed to get the junk out. So I want you to think about your mind. I want you to think about your emotions. Everybody say emotions. emotions. Okay. Your emotions will lie to you. All right. Your emotions are not scripture. <laughs> you understand me? Okay? Your emotions are not biblical truth, right? Your mind, your body, your emotions, okay? So what happens is, is you're going through life and things happen to you. Or sometimes you do it to yourself, right? And your filters get holes in them. They get clogged up. They get junk that happens to it, okay? Right? Um, 
Your boss manipulates you. Give someone else the raise, give someone else a job, you get fired. You go through a bankruptcy, everything falls apart. You lose your home, you lose your car, you lose friends, you lose family, okay? Things happen to you, and then this is what's going on inside of you. Everybody good so far? Okay, so then, turn to me, Jamie. I'm God, not really. No, stand behind it. Here's Jamie's emotions. I love you. I love you. He doesn't love me. I have a plan of a purpose for you. I failed at everything financially. I'm forgiving you and it's not your fault. It's all okay. Everything's my fault and nothing's okay. Right? Okay, good job, Jamie. Stay there. Nope, don't go anywhere. All right, now I want to talk about the clogged up filters. I'll show everybody. So this is not sweet, Jamie. Okay. This is why most Christians struggle with the things of the Spirit, having encounters with God, having revelation in their life, having deliverance in their life, hearing God's voice on a regular basis. You get so clogged up from the world. There's a reason why God talked about sin so much. It wasn't to beat you with it. It's because it's what prevents you from having relationship with him. So if you have something going on in your life, that stuff, those filters, you're not able to hear his loving, tender voice say, I forgive you. Let me help you. Let me change this. All you hear is And so because you can't hear him through the clogged filters of your soul, you start making stuff up. You start wandering in the desert. You'll go, there's many believers that have aborted the destiny inside of them. And it wasn't the potential. It wasn't the destiny. It was the enemy used so many things to clog them up that they ba got buried. They got buried. And let me tell you, this is where the church is supposed to be the ones that say, you know what? I know you're talking crazy right now, but I think you just got buried by a bunch of stuff. Let me show you how I fix that. Let me show you how I got transformed from that. And you help people begin to renew their mind, renew their life, get back, give them food, give them something to eat, help them with some gas money. You begin to do things that start to pull the clogs, start to take the junk out of their filters, okay? So that's why, like as pastors, we've learned, if we have somebody new or you come up and you start talking crazy, talking crazy about something, or you're going crazy AWOL on us, I know something got in your filters. Because I know the Spirit's not saying that. I know that you've sided with not the Spirit. So I'm going to try and get you back into your spirit because all this stuff has happened, okay? So I'm going to throw this out to you. Families, individuals, you have to watch the filters of your home you have to watch the filters of your heart. You have to watch the filters of your eyes. You have to watch the filters of your mind. You have to watch the filters of everything that's going on around you because you might have clean filters. Do I have a clean filter? I do. You might have a clean filter emotionally, but your body might be like this. Or you might be, uh, your mind is like clear but your emotions keep crashing on you. Keep crashing on you. See, you can have mixed things going on. And this is where most Christians struggle and live their lives, is in the mix. It's mixing. Half a prophetic word, half your soul. Half what the Spirit's saying, half what not the Spirit is saying. And we're, it's not that you don't want to do it right. It's not that you don't want to do beautiful things. Give me just a couple more minutes, guys. I got to finish this. 
It's not that you don't have such beautiful things inside of you, but when you have filters in different places, then that your words are going through these filters to others. Okay, so let me show you this. All right, so Jamie's talking to me. I'm broke, I'm jacked up, I'm fired. <laughs> I, I can't get anywhere. God, God's not speaking to me. I think God's abandoned me. I think God's forgot about me. Her filter's talking to me. That's right. And I'm like, Jamie, no, the word of God says he's got a plan and a purpose for you. It's going to be okay. Huh? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. It's like we rehearsed this and we did it. But listen, now imagine, everybody look at everybody. Everybody's got to mix in their filters. And that's why it feels like bumper cars sometimes. Okay? But let me tell you, behind this filter is an incredibly powerful, beautiful person. Right? And behind your filter is a powerful, incredibly called person. So your job is to deal with the filters, the things that have gotten inside your filters so you can hear and speak by the Spirit correctly. Yeah. All right? Thanks, Jamie. Good job. All right, worship team, come on up, please. I'm going to talk for just one more minute. If you just give me some sustain, I would appreciate it. Okay. So know, to know him, you must spend time in the word, worship, time in the spirit. You must unclog and clear out the filters of the things you've picked up from this world, okay? In the garden, our mind, our emotions, our bodies were clean, clean, pure, perfect. And one day, we're going to be there again. I can't wait because it's so much work. It's a lot of work, right? You're a lot of work. I'm a lot of work. You're a lot of work. You guys know what I'm saying. It's a lot of work. But God has given us a, a way to hear him, to know him, to have a relationship with him. So we have to identify the snakes. We have to identify the filters. And we have to begin to identify the spirit. We have to focus on the spirit so the spirit brings life and blasts out the junk that got in the filters, right? The spirit of God comes in power. That's what was happening this morning. The power of God was coming and blasting through the junk that got stuck inside of us. And that's what's going to happen right now. We're going to take, I, like I said, don't worry about your crock pot. It's going to be all right. They don't, they don't blow up, all right? We're going to, we were going to give God like 10 more minutes. And I want those, I want the stuff that's been clogged up, bogged up, just inside there I want it to be blasted out by the Holy Spirit because you're worth it you are epic your potential is unlimited I don't care your age your stature I don't care you have unlimited potential inside of you so why should we let this world keep you from what is yours your inheritance is to be clean to hear, to know Amen. his voice, and for your voice to be released by the Spirit of God into others' lives. And so I'm going to throw this, else, else out, throw this also at you. If you see somebody that is like this, they're gold. If there's believers that you have in your life that are like this, love them and honor them because they paid a price. They paid a price. Okay? And I'm not just saying this so you're like, feel good about me or Ryan or anything like that. But I want you to know that there is a price to pay, pray, pay, I can't talk, for transformation. Right. It's, a hard, it's hard work down here, folks. So don't be discouraged. But when somebody's speaking from the Spirit and you know somebody's got that cleanness, then, then begin to listen to that. Begin to side with that. Because sometimes... Somebody can speak from the Spirit and it's clear, but your filter says it's not. Okay? So if, I'm, if I have this and I'm giving you the Spirit of God, don't be, use your filter to interpret my filter. So if, if you're critical, 
if you're judgmental, if you're mean, if you're nasty, it's not others, it's you. Sorry, I'll tell, I'll, listen, I'll, t- I'll look in the mirror and I'll tell myself this. That's why I can say it to you. But we're not a church that just wants to pat you on the back and say, God bless you, hope you make it through another week. If you want that church, go find it because we ain't it. We believe in the power of God. We believe in transformation. We believe that the blood of Jesus is enough. And we believe in you. And so sometimes you need some people to tell you straight. If you don't have people that tell you straight in your life, you've built a bubble of fake. Shoo, I better shut up. Holy smokes. That fire gets on me. I better be quiet. I'm sorry. Wow. I like skip like three pages of notes. All right. So that's what we're going to do. However, this is applied to your heart. I want you to know that you need to know more than words. You need to know all of who your father is so you understand the words that are flowing from him to you. Okay? So you got to get the stuff out that is hindering you from really knowing him. Then you have to spend the time with him. You can't know him without time. Right? You have to spend time in the spirit. You can't know him by the soul. You can only know him by the spirit. So if you keep trying to find him from your soul, that's why you're never getting anywhere. But if you spend time in the spirit, you will find him. You will know him. And things will begin to shift and crack and pop and break in your life. It will. So don't interpret everything by the soul. Begin to shift your thinking. Shift your thinking. Okay? And if you need to write no cards... Today, I'm operating in the spirit, okay? You want to know how people get crazy awesome things from God? They got it by getting out of the soul. They got it by being led. They got it by being in the spirit and receiving because he is spirit. You have to have spirit to spirit. That's where life is. And that's where, honestly, almost all of our answers come from, right there. So if somebody's not speaking by the spirit, it's because... They weren't in the spirit and they didn't receive it from the spirit. Or they got it partly in the spirit and then they started adding some soul with it. But you have to have the discernment to know the difference. Because if you don't, you've opened yourself up for deception. All right? So this is what we're going to do. I just feel like the power of God wants to come. I feel like God wants to touch you. And listen, there's no agenda. It's him. He is the agenda. And so you want to come lay on your face you want to do whatever, what I want to do is I just want to stay in this cord for a minute. I want to release some prophetic like we've been practicing, okay? I want to release the, I want to release the voice of heaven over you because sometimes you get so clogged up, it's just muffled. So we're going to help and we're going to declare it over you. But listen, when I, when I first got saved and I had chaos, utter chaos inside of me, The way I began to overcome it was on my face at the altar, pouring out everything. It's work, but it's so worth it. And so we're going to take a few minutes and then we'll release in a couple minutes, but come up here, stay in your seat, do whatever you need to do, but don't miss your moment with your father. Okay. Let me say this one last thing. Sorry. If you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you're watching online, if you're here, if, you, if you've known him and you've walked away from him, or if you've never asked Jesus Christ into your life, I want you to be, I want today to be the beginning. Okay? I want today to be the beginning. I just feel like I'm supposed to hold here for one second. So if you want to give your life back to Jesus Christ, if you want to start over, if you want to give your life to him for the first time, I want you to pray this with me, okay? It is literally this simple, even though it might sound like there's no way it is. It is this simple. So I want everybody to pray with me, okay? Now I want you to pray with me. You know who I'm, you know I'm talking to you. I want you to pray with me, okay? Dear Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart to come into my life. Please forgive me for all my sin. I'm coming back to you. I want to have a relationship with you. And I give you my life. 
I trust you. In Jesus' name. Amen. of the Lord is thundering over you. The voice of the Lord is thundering over you. The voice of the Lord is echoing, echoing, echoing out to you. Echoing out to you. Rise up, awaken, awaken, awaken. Rise up, awaken, awaken, awaken. Wake up, my sleeping beauty. Wake up, my bride.
army of the Lord is rising. The 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 army of the Lord is rising. Awakening, 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 awakening. Breakthrough, 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 breakthrough.
I declare over you that the axe has come and has cut the root, has cut the root, has cut the root out today in Jesus' name. The root of bad thinking, of believing things that were never what God said about you or for you, it's done. You will now side with your Father. You will now side with His love. You will now side with His goodness. And I pray right now in Jesus' name that what you feel and hear and hear would be permanently implanted inside of you. All week, when the soul tries to talk, you're going to sing, the glory of the Lord is rising. When your mind tries to tell you stuff, you're going to say, the glory of the Lord is rising. When your finances, when your body, when people begin to come and say things, you're going to say, the glory of the Lord is rising. And the scales are being tipped in your life. The Spirit of God is going to lead you into goodness, goodness, goodness. Let's go one more minute. Let's do it. Let's finish it up. just the voices I want to I want to hear you guys get it out okay I want you to put the exclamation point on what God's saying right now so let's do it let's just do the voices let's go Let's say it in me. Let's do it. Keep going. That's right. You guys can handle it. Come on. The glory of the Lord is rising. The glory of the Lord is rising in me. In me. Speak it out. The glory of the Lord is rising. The glory of the Lord is rising. The glory of the Lord is rising in me. All right, one more time. The glory of the Lord is rising. The glory of the Lord is rising. The glory of the Lord is rising. It's rising in me. Yeah. Woo, Jesus. <laughs> Woo. So if you wanted a prophetic word, there it is. The glory of the Lord is rising in you. Amen. Hey. You guys are awesome. We could do this all the time. I mean, we could go all day. We really could. So if you got to go, you got to go. If you guys want to go for one more minute, go ahead. But I'm shutting the mic down.